Very rude. There it is. I saw it. Let's go back to spectator mode. There it is. Yeah, they've been playing for four minutes. Cheeky. Cheeky buggers. Yeah, so it is still Spain versus Portugal. Here we go, guys. Let's do it. Uh, we do have... There we go. We're all good. Okay. We're straight in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first game. This is the first game that I've actually casted in the Hidden Cup tournament where we don't have any out of sync issues. So I'm hoping that we don't have any throughout this. This is a best of five between Julian and Lionheart. And this is to basically qualify for the next stage of the Hidden Cup tournament hosted and organized by EZAD. So welcome everyone. We are on the first game here, Central Plains. And on the bottom left part of the map, we have Julian. Julian! I want to keep saying Julian for some reason because um, I've watched this crime sort of drama series called uh, Baptiste and I think his name is Julian Baptiste. Um, so, I, I yeah, I, I really want to say Julian every time. I, it's really, really hard for me not to say that. So I'm going to try and say uh, Julian. So Julian here, bottom left in the blue playing as the, uh, as the Spanish and top right. We have my boy Lionheart from the UK. Playing as the Portuguese in the teal or cyan, whatever you want to call it. And let's have a look at the decks. Let's get straight into them. So uh, Julian here is going for the first card. It's three settlers. And uh, are we going to see just a standard naked fast fortress? Something that, you know, Spain uh, are well known for. Or are we going to do something that Aiken did in, in another one of the matchups where he kind of went for the ATP? I don't know. Is the ATP available? Yes, it is. There it is. The advanced trading post is there. Usually the ATP is taken as the second card. When we casted or when I casted the Aiken game, he went for the ATP card first. But this could be, and it is a great map for some of that kind of play. So let's have a quick look and see what happens. There we go. The ATP is in. So we're going to be seeing some H2 involvement here from Julian. And if we go over to Lionheart here, let's have a look. Playing as the Portuguese, he's going for 300 wood. Widgie is an... What? What? Hang on. Seriously? Which? Wow. All right. I shouldn't have bet on Lionheart then. Widgie is a noob. Damn. Cold. That is rough. <sighs> Woo! Okay, come on, Julian. You got this. You got the best of five, my friend. So, uh, <laughs> Lionheart here, uh, playing as the the, uh, the Portuguese here. He's gone for 300 wood first. Now, interesting one to go, because normally you would have the uh, Fatorius card, but that has been banned in this. So, he's gone for 300 wood. Interesting as to why that is. I'm sure maybe some of you can let me know in chat. I'm not well averse with playing the Portuguese that much. So, seeing the 300 wood is an interesting one to go so we do see the collection of that happening right now yes the fatoria card is banned in this tournament now we do see the age up philosopher prince coming in which i believe is the one for food and we do see one tp going down are we going to have the war of the tp line just like we had in aiken's game i think we're seeing that the 300 would yes of course being used to really propel the tp and he's going to try and deny julian of the ATP himself. You can see all the vills are on wood now. One vill is going to be peeling off. Is that to get this TP down? No, it's not. It's to herd. We do have um, Sebastian here. Perez coming in. And we've got three TPs for Julian. And only two at the moment for Lionheart. So Lionheart trying to deny what he can there. You have a look at Julian's vision here. And look at his deck as well. 1v1 Supremacy. Um, we've got three resource crates. We've got the hand infantry and just the Rodellero. That's the only actual unit, military unit that we have. And if we have a look over at Lionheart here, just about to get into age two. He has a card available. And yeah, he's way more loaded up on age three stuff here. So I'm going to be very interested to see how long he wants to stay in age two. And he is going to be grabbing himself 25 wood. And he's really going to put this TC out into the middle of the map here, trying to claim as much of the map as possible. 
And it looks like Julian, just looking at the at the gold here, I've got a feeling, there it is, the naked FF is on the way. So he is going to be unable to defend these TPs. So is, is Lionheart going to take advantage of that? Is he going to put a little bit of pressure on? He is not. He's doing exactly the same. He's got 700 coin in as well. But I think Julian is looking a little bit better in regards to timing. So it is a battle of the FFs right now, ladies and gents. The FF gang. Indeed. No noob allowed policy here. <laughs> Isn't Spanish FF better than poor FF? Um, I mean, I would say so, but there have been recent changes to Spain and also to ports as well with the three organ guns. Yes, the organ guns do now cost uh, 200 gold, isn't it? They do cost 200 for the three. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say probably Spain is better with the XP curve, but um, I mean, Lionheart does have two Ps to himself. Two TPs, sorry, but I mean, Julian does have three. So yeah, it's, it's tricky. Yes, I have seen Lionheart's deck name. Yes, don't worry. Let's not talk about that. The Trollolol, indeed. Yeah, indeed. I wonder if his other sieves that he's picked have all got the same as well. Uh, Widgy is a noob. We'll see. He's probably listening to it. Well, he shouldn't be listening to it. He shouldn't be stream sniping. But um, who knows? Okay, so we've got five vills coming in. We also had the 700 wood. So, yeah, very kind of standard sort of naked FF that you would see from Spain. And... Um, yeah, he's just macroing up now, getting ready. But Lionheart is is way ahead here, looking good, going for the marksman, the slower age up here, which I believe is going to give him the Casadors, correct? Let's have a quick look at the vision here. I do like the uh, the militiamen being out here, and really now the veal. Hopefully that doesn't back. Hopefully he heard that correctly. He does fantastic. Look at that. Lionheart all over it there. That could have been disastrous. He could have really um, heard the wrong way there, but he's looking good. And now he's got a slight forward barracks as well. So really trying to spread out over the map and play an aggressive sort of Portuguese here. And if we have a quick look at Julian here, he is a little bit behind. He's also going just for the, uh, he's going for the bishop here. And he's getting his market techs in. And he's going for the Rodelero. Now, I noticed that because he's obviously got Team Hand Attack Infantry. He's got the Archaic Infantry Combat as well. An interesting one is this card that I sometimes see as well, which is kind of the, a new kind of Spanish-Mexico hybrid card where you get two Hacienda Wagons. And, um, and it says that basically, uh, yeah, enables spawn of Chinacos. So a very interesting... Yeah, and you can also spawn soldados at them as well. And obviously settlers as well. So I don't know if we're going to be seeing that card in action. We've got double Rodelero, ladies and gents, on the way. So I'm very interested to see the composition that Julian's going to be going. Maybe this is quite a good one against Spain. I mean, I think it is because Casadors, remember, ladies and gents, Casadors have really poor melee attack. Look, five melee attack. Really, really bad. They will not do any kind of multiplier or counter to the um, Rodelleros. So the Rodelleros can really get a good surround, and they can also do very well against Dragoons. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. But we do see eight Halberdiers now coming in for Lionheart. I've seen this before, along with the organ guns as well. So the Halberdiers are going to be good. Going to be able to defend the organ guns. So... Very, very interesting. And we do have another TC just put here on the front line as well. And what do we see? We see a little Rodelero raid there, managing to nab one Ville. One Rodelero lost, one Ville lost. I think that's a pretty good trade there for Julian. And he has got Spanish Gold coming in now. So Spanish Gold is a card that we never really used to see that much because of certain changes that they made to it. But now we're starting to see it a little bit more in decks. And there it is. You get a coin crate for every shipment going forward. And now we do see a push forward now from Lionheart. He's got his timing correct. He's going to be having his... Where are his organ guns? There they are. They're up there, up north. And yeah, Julian definitely needs some kind of answer for these organ guns, I would say. Instead, he's going for a thousand wood, being very greedy here. 
He's got the Rodelero Skirm composition going, but he's going to struggle because the uh, Halberdiers will definitely tussle with the with the Rodelleros. 28 hand attack damage for the Halbs and uh, only 11 there for the Rodelleros. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. Is there going to be a push coming in? Let's have a look at Julian's, Julian's vision here. Not looking ideal. Those organ guns. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We've got to be careful with the whole lock-on um, change now with artillery pieces. So uh, the organ gun will, if it if it locks on, if the animation starts, it is going to proceed with that animation, essentially, and that, that firing. So you cannot sort of get out of range of it once it starts. So you've got to be very, very careful. Now, the Falx here, they have 26 range, and the organ guns... Uh, the organ guns are hard to see because I haven't actually haven't sorted themselves out. But we got 26 range on the Fouts. He needs to use those essentially as culverins to really knock out those those organ guns. Look at these Rodelleros when they're upgraded. They look beautiful. Look at that blue. Fantastic. Okay, let's have a look. We do see Lionheart on with the great coat, and he has got another card available, and he's basically spamming the shipment button. Because we see a fort. Ladies and gents, we see a toxic fort inbound. Classic Lionheart this is. You see it when he plays the USA. You see it when you play Mexico. You're seeing it now with the ports. Do you see five Dragoons coming in now for Lionheart as well. And uh, it looks like Julian's just going to tickle. Tickle the town centre here with the with the falconets and he himself has some lances he's got some backup culverins that's nice to see on the way as well and just kind of macroing for food and gold right now pretty straightforward there are the lances here i wonder if he's going to do any kind of raiding or whether he's just going to probably use them here he's going to need some more skirms i think for the amount of halberdiers that we see and now is the pop and the move forward from lionheart he's going to use this as some momentum and the halberdier is just going to get stuck in they're going to go one on one are they no they're not the Rodelleros are going to back off here as much as they can skirms trying to micro and deal with the dragoons one of the falx is going, definitely going to go down but three organ guns still looking pretty and he needs to be careful of the range of those organ guns because they are devastating when they get going but no real organ gun fire here at all and unfortunately julian losing both falconets there so i think that was a pretty good trade there for lionheart overall yeah this is this is hard to micro there's a lot of different unit types and it comes becomes a little bit overwhelming maybe not so much for these for these guys but for the average player when you've got this many different unit comps you've really got to make sure that you have your micro down you have your positioning just right uh, we do see that tc being repaired and we can see a little bit of a score lead here coming from uh, julian here he's on 41 vils opposed to lionheart's oh lionheart's on 41 as well fantastic we've got another card coming in for him as well seven casadors and it looks like the uh, actual TP line has never been upgraded. Never got upgraded because it was too much in a contested, I believe. It wasn't worth it for any player to do it. Where is the fort? Yeah, great question. There was a fort, wasn't there? And maybe he cancelled it. I don't see it on the map. That may have been cancelled. Yes, it was. The fort was cancelled. And I think it was switched out for five Dragoons. Look at all these Rodelleros, though. They're going to be raiding in with their swords. Coming on in. 35 of them. G Jesus. Lord have mercy. Going to be trying to pick off a couple of bills here. What is he going to see? Let's have a look at his vision. But does he need to come back to base? Because there is a huge amount of Casadors coming in. But the Rodelleros are going to see what they can try and do. Trying to do a nice little pull trick there with the Vils. Getting a couple there. Is he going to be able to make connection with all three? Two are going to definitely go down. Is the third one going to go? Oh, yes, it does. Three fills. And with that, Lionheart is now pushing in. He is not happy with that exchange at all. He's going to be pushing in, and he's got the organ guns rolling up. Julian's definitely going to need to do something with those lancers, but they're making connection with the halberdiers. Militiamen have been popped. Colves are going to try and do what they can. 
One goes down. Beautiful shot. Nice needs another one to make a connection. Yes, it does. And um, we're just seeing at TC here. Julian looking pretty good. And what do we see from behind? We see some perfect Rodelleros about to get the snare and the surround. And I think Julian's going to be pushing now forward with the skirm. He's going to try and make as best as what he can here. Rodelleros. Oh, look how look how they do against the Casadors. It's the hand attack, ladies and gents. He's just going to completely swarm the Halberdiers here. And he's just going to be able to get the snare on them. And he's going to push forward with the skirms. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful play. Doesn't want to lose too many Rodelleros, though. I don't know if he's going to commit all of them here. I think he might do. Pretty good. And we do see Cav Combat coming in now. And we do have a Falconet training on the way. And a 1,000 food coming in now for Julian. Lionheart hasn't got his steel traps in. So he's getting those in just now. Quite a late, I must say. For a Portuguese player to be getting the uh, the steel traps in. Some would say quite a noob play. Some would say. Okay, what do we see? We do see Town Militia card coming in now. Lionheart going to have to get on the defensive, I think, here. Yeah, Rodelo is very good, especially against Portuguese, because Casador hand attack is so small. They really suffer against... You know, a unit such as the Rodelleros. They have great speed and really good capability of getting a surround and a snare on units so that other units can basically whittle them down. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So, what are we seeing here? We're seeing Town Militia coming in, some more Casadors coming in now in training for uh, Lion. Julian now training three Falks for himself, going to be able to put some serious pressure. More rods coming on the way now as well. He's got plenty of skirms left. He doesn't need to worry about training any skirms. He just needs to uh, remass his rods and uh, he will be all good, I think. I have unfortunately bet some channel points on Lionheart here, so he better he better not let me down. I mean, calling his deck, which he is a noob, is not helpful, but the Town Militia card is here and he's going to use that to push him with his Castadors, but... Is it a little too late? There's so many Falks here, and I just don't think it's enough. He is going to pop even more Militiamen coming out here now. The, the Falks are going to be rolling forward, just getting in range, and boom, there it goes. Three volleys. Fantastic. All the Militiamen going down, and the Casadors aren't going to be able to do anything against the Lancers here. And uh, there it is, ladies and gents. The GG. Fantastic. So Julian takes the first game, ladies and gents. That is 1-0 to Julian so far. And uh, it's great that we can cast this live. It's really, really awesome. Uh, I do enjoy the live cast. It does add a, just a nice little nice little zest to, to casting games. So um, we are just going to have a quick look, very quick look at the post-game analysis. see there the economy julian really doing a great job surprising because you know ports with their multiple tcs but the lack of the new card the lack of the fatorius or however you pronounce it the fatorius card uh, is actually banned in this tournament so if it wasn't then the economy here would be a different scenario entirely a really good game i love the use of the Rodelleros. really great use um, of them against portuguese i like to see that and we can just look at a few timelines here very quickly. All resources gathered is a nice one to see. See age up times there. Pretty much neck and neck. Both going for like a naked FF strategy. Unfortunately, Lionheart losing the first game. And Julian taking it. And uh, we move on, ladies and gents, to the second game very, very shortly. Uh, yeah, good question. Did did Julian actually go for the ATP? Yes, he actually did. He went for the ATP, secured three out of the five TPs. Lionheart went 300 wood first so that he could secure two of the TPs. And um, yeah, that's how it went. That's how it went. Okay, so we do have the next matchup, ladies and gents. This one is going to be Julian 
is going to be playing the Japanese. Wherever it is, there it is. And Lionheart is going to be playing Dutch. So Harrison. Harrison's got a big smile on his face in chat now. Seeing the Dutch there. So ladies and gents, of course, let us know your prediction. Who is going to take the second game? I know you guys are betting with the channel points right now. It's more in Julian's favor at the moment. 140k channel points against 119. You have the option there to use it. Hype Dutch, indeed. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gents. This is going to be played on the second map, which is the Pampas Sierras. You can see it there on the top left. And I'm just going to have a quick swig of my drink. And we're going to get into the second game. By the way, I just want to say, we have 160 viewers in. Can we make it to 200 like last time? Can we do it? Can we do it? I hope so. Thank you for everyone who's in here right now. You guys are awesome. I can't see the game currently in spectator mode. I'm just having a quick look. Can't seem to see it, I don't think. No, I don't see it right now. So we are just going to wait for the game to be available to spectate. So talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I'm waiting for Lion's 22nd Village Idol after Age into Age 2. <laughs> Let's see if that happens. I can't wait to see the name of the deck. I wonder if it's going to be Widgey is a new, but or maybe it's going to be something different. Who knows? Who knows? Age of Bozzers. Yeah, the Bosniaks. I don't. I think the Bozzers are... I don't think they've been banned on this tournament. So it would be good to see it. Sorry, just joined. What was the first one like? It was an interesting game. Just to give you guys a rundown if you have just joined. Uh, basically, both Julian and Lionheart went for Naked FF, Fast Fortress strategies. And Julian went Spain, Lionheart went Ports. Lionheart tried to take more of the map with TCs, tried to be a bit aggressive. Julian went ATP, secured three out of the five eight, uh, TPs. And just played a better game using Rodelleros a lot. Really utilizing Rodelleros, using them for a bit for raiding and also for snaring and slowing down the Casadors and, and cleaning up uh, Lionheart's army at the end there. So that's what happened. Which is a pro. Uh, I don't think so. I, I appreciate that, that comment, but um, I'm afraid not. Animus in chat. My teammate, Animus. My my good solid teammate. No, USA is not allowed. No, no. This is uh, this is a uh, legacy only. So it's no civs relating to DE, no maps relating to DE. Would you more than a solid Russia performance? Are thank you very much, Animus. You are too kind. Okay, let's have a look here. Do it. Yes, we do have the game, ladies and gents. We're going to be getting into it right now. Let's do it. Here we go, Pampas Sierras. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second game here between Julian and Lionheart. This is a best of five on the Hidden Cup tournament organized by EZAD through the ESOC community. And it's been great. It's been it's been awesome. I've casted quite a few of these uh, matchups in the tournament, and I can't wait for further ones in the future. And in the first game, unfortunately, Lionheart did lose the first game it was uh, Julian playing Spain Lionheart playing Ports and unfortunately um, Lionheart did lose the first so Julian took the first and we had the second game here and on the south part of the map we do have Lionheart playing as the Dutch in the Teal or Cyan 
And north part of the map, we have Julian playing as the Japanese in the lovely dark blue there. So let me know, guys, your thoughts. Uh, Pampas Sierras has a lot of hunts, a lot of hunts, quite close to the base as well. So it enables Japan to be quite safe with a lot of the shrines. So that's quite a good thing, I think. And also getting any of the herdables as well is, is very key. Uh, there's all llamas that spawn uh, on the left side of the map. So it's really, really crucial. And you can see here already um, Lionheart saying, want a special brownie. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, going to be um, trying to snare one of the explorers there and managing to nab three of the of the llamas. And now the envoy here is trying to get control of them, but is uh, not going to be able to. So three llamas there secured by Julian. Very nice. And I'm, it's very interesting. I'm going to be very interested to see how Japan plays. Because I'm thinking about giving Japan a go at some point. I've never really played them at all in 1v1s. So I'll be interested to see what the what the actual opening is. You know, we have we have one shrine going down. We do actually see Heavenly Kami. So, and, that, and that's what I said. I think this map's quite good for it because you have a lot of hunts relatively nearby. It enables you to, to do a nice shrine boom. And we're seeing like an old school shrine boom here. We're going for the Heavenly Kami with the Portuguese consulates. Oh, we do have a game pause. Whoa, consensus. A perfect time to, to pause there. Wow. Look at this. Coming in with 10 gifted subs. Wow, that's amazing. Consensus, I've seen you um, playing a lot on stream. Not yourself streaming, but other streamers playing and then playing against you, if that kind of makes sense. Thank you very much. That's absolutely amazing. That means the world to the ESOC community. 10 gifted subs there. So if you've been given a, a sub, make sure to let consensus know and, and give him a thanks as well. Awesome to see. Right, let's have a look and see what uh, Julian... Uh, sorry, no, Lionheart is up to here. So on the age up, very nice. Getting in the Quartermaster, so he's going to be getting 400 wood when he gets in. And we can see here... We Whoa. Widgie has big pee-pee. <laughs> oh, God, I love this. I love this. I love how quick Lionheart was typing it as well. Widgie has a... Big pee pee. Love it. Lionheart. We were supposed to keep that just between me and you, Lionheart, to be honest. I mean I'm you know You know what I you know what I'm like about that kind of thing. Okay, so Lionheart here. Uh going for the quartermaster. Sorry, that really threw me off there, ladies and gents. And Animus coming in with the subscription with Prime for six months, you absolute monster. Thank you very much for your support to ESOP. Appreciate it. Now, we do see Lionheart trying to go for the 100 XP. That's going to be really, really nice just to increase his tempo a little bit. And, um, yeah, I mean, the deck overall looks pretty darn standard. We do see the Bozzies. The Bozzers are in there. Six Bosniaks for 1,000 gold. And also the Swiss Pikemen in Age 3 as well, along with the Brigadiers in Age 2. Let's have a look over back at... Julian, let's see what he's he's going to be aging out. I thought it would be the Toshogu Shrine. So going for a nice shrine boom here. Uh, kind of the ideal thing to do against Dutch because normally Dutch are very turtle-like. That They don't really do too much of an aggression in H2. So it allows certain sieves to boom, especially ones that you know build shrines or torps, to really get out on the map and try and secure as much of the map as possible. And that's why it's really nice to see Julian going for a good old old school kind of shrine boom here with the with the ports cons so it's nice to see oh my god there's so many gifted subs coming in what is happening oh my god nishas coming in with 10 gifted subs thank you very much dude this is absolutely crazy ezad's going mental thank you very much for supporting the esoc community my friend make sure to 
let Nishas know and give your thanks as well if he has gifted you a sub. And also we see uh, Radovan buys, uh, buys the dust coming in with another gifted sub to scoff there as well. Wow, absolute huge hype coming in. Big hype. Wow. Hunting Dog's coming in. Bank Wagon is now coming in. So he's going for basically the 700 wood, the Bank Wagon. Very kind of standard. Putting a defensive barracks at the back here. Nothing too... Nothing too different and unusual here for um, as a Dutch opening. It's going to be a total of four banks. And you can see, uh, you know, they do score quite heavily. And, and, and interesting enough, Julian going for the nice wall here. It's interesting to see. I wonder why, what his thought process was around that. He has got a couple of shrines all the way out here, actually. And uh, he is starting to build a few in base. And he's going for the Hanami parties, which is the increase for the berry gathering. And he's got all um, shrines on wood. So he's just he's just really in on it, on, on just basically chopping as much wood as possible. And he's going for the double vill. He's going for the for the four vill and the four vill again. Wow. So what I really like with Japan is that, like, your, your deck lasts so long. I think it's crazy. Like, with the double cards, I think it's just nuts. I'm not saying it's broken. I just think it's it's crazy that you can like you can basically reuse a lot of your cards. It's going for more of a food upgrade as well. So really booming here, going for a nice eco start. And he's gonna be moving over to coin now, starting to get a few of the market upgrades that he needs. So being very greedy here. And um, how's Lionheart gonna deal with this? He's gonna be sending some pipemen out, it seems. Maybe on a hunt for some shrines, get a little bit of pressure on. And looks like a kind of, you could say, a semi-FF, opening up with some pikes, training a little bit of skirms. And he's looking like he's macroing perfectly there for the age three. So he's probably going to use some units here just to be a little bit of a nuisance. And let's have a look at Lionheart's vision here. He actually has pretty much all, apart from this one here, he has all of the native spots. And there is the age two. Three available, and it's the Exile Prince, which is the fast age up on the way. And uh, the Pike women have spotted it, and then off they go. If we have a look at Julian here, he's nearly maxed his shrines at just coming up to eight minutes, which is pretty damn insane. You can see the amount of uh, wood flooding in. He doesn't even need any vills on wood now. And he's going to be ready. I don't know. I think he's going to probably switch. Once he's max shrines, he'll probably switch to gold. Or he might just... No, he's just going to plow all of his vills onto gold, I think. And just really get that age up in as soon as... Oh, wait, no. He got he got a coin shipment. Apologies. Apologies. I missed that. He went for a coin shipment. And now he's going for the age up himself. The golden pavilion. This is quite a... This is definitely a very popular one to go for um, in age three. Basically provides you with Yumi Archers, which is great. Gives you six. And also you can you can change whether you want to increase speed of units, HP, or also attack. Ranged attack. So yeah, Pike's going to be doing a good job here from Lionheart. He is now got into the Fortress Age. And it looks like he's going kind of skirm Pike, it seems, at the moment. Julian going for the really greedy slow boom. So he's got to start to get out on the map when he does get into age three because he's going to need to defend some of these shrines. He doesn't want to keep losing them, rebuilding, losing, rebuilding. He really wants to get involved. Sorry, I haven't watched AB3 in a bit. Why are people building native posts so fast? Oh, there's a change. Yes, you can actually take control of the post. And then you can you can see that you can build it just for 100 food and 100 wood remotely. So you don't even need to have an explorer on it. So it changes the kind of concept. And it encourages players to basically explore the map so they can get control and get a bit of vision of the uh, area as well. So we do see the classic kind of Yumi wall here. Very, very popular with Japanese players. And we're going to see how he plays this one. I don't know why Lionheart's writers are going in this this deep. Why are they going in so far? Why do they want to kill this explorer? I mean, did he just take his eye off there? Was he taking his eye off the ball? I'm not entirely sure. Um, he's going to be losing his explorer here. So Jillian doing a good job. Really trying to protect his shrines. 
And now we do see Nagy's on the field. Something scary indeed. Uh, it looks like it's just skirm writer comp here for Lionheart. Very standard throughout, throughout the opening, throughout the composition. It's very standard. We are going to see a little bit of a skirmish here. The Yumi's are going to try and see what they can do. They're not going to be able to do a great deal, but Nagi's coming in from behind, and there's only three writers left. The Yumi's are going to be able to try and most slightly dispatch them. The Pike as well. Yumi's very, very powerful. Great range as well. Same range as Skirms, but definitely higher damage. Higher damage, sort of same, same sort of HP. And more Skirms coming out now for Lionheart. We do see a shipment of Nagis coming in for Julian now. So really going for the Nagi composition. But what has he got here? He's making some Yamabushis, which are basically big boys with a massive like club that deal huge damage to cavalry. It's basically like a pike unit. And uh, they're very, very scary. And looks like we're going for some kind of sort of Yumi Nagi composition with a few Yamabushis. So interesting. Okay. See, I mean, look at these banks here. We only have four banks. We don't have the five just yet. We've got a card available for Lionheart. And he's just continuing to produce skirms. He does have... Hang on a minute. He's got a 1,000 gold coming up. Is he going to... Oh, he's not. I thought he would do it. I thought he would go for, like, the bozzers or something. He had a perfect amount of gold there, but chose not to. Instead, he's going for the writers. Okay. That's a shame. I was going I was going to do my little song, my little bozzer bozzer song. But I guess not. I guess not. And look at that. Five gifted subs coming in again from uh, XDBZXX. Make sure to let them, if you've received a gifted sub, make sure to let XDBZXX your thanks. Japan up in score. Is that normal? I'm not too sure because Julian here has pretty much got, yeah, he's got max shrines. He's also got intervention, which I don't know what that actually produces when you go for the Japanese consulate. We are going to see what it produces. I don't know whether it's more Yamabushis. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but let's get into this fight right now. The uh, Yumi's just pushing forward, doing a great job. And the, um, the Yamabushis, I'm not too sure what their plan is. I don't know whether they're going to try and shut down the riots if they can. But it looks like they are just going to be a meat shield. You can see they're going into the cover mode here. Reducing or increasing, sorry, their range resistance. And Nagis is going to try and see what they can do. But the riots, I mean, the Nagis have such high, high HP. Nearly 400 HP here. Um, more Nagis filtering on through. Going to try and pick up some skirms if they can. But um, it's not going overly well here for... I don't know, though. Uh, he's getting a bit of connection. Julian's getting a bit of connection there with the uh, with the Yamabushis. But I think Lionheart doing a pretty good job trying to just keep out of the way of those Yamabushis. Because when you do, as you can see here, when you do get in the way, it's quite devastating. It's uh, a huge multiplier on attack here. Yeah, and Julian has more Yamabushis coming in, slowly walking in, it seems. That's what the uh, consulate card did there. And he's going to start getting some Naginata Rider HP. Look at that, 25%. Absolutely insane. Oh, no, he's switching it. He's going for the two Cherry Orchards. Looks like he's probably getting a little bit low. Yes, he is. He's getting a little low. He's going to have to switch shrines to food for now to cover him whilst he gets those Cherry Orchards. And a lot of skirmishes going on here, but the Yamabushis are going to do what they do best. 47 Siege are going to be sieging the barracks on the right side here. Got a lot of idols here for Lionheart. Where's he off to? We're not too sure. He's on the back foot a little bit here. More and more skirms coming in now. He's really maxing the skirm. skirms out here. But it's looking pretty good. Uh, Julian in a really good position because he's got the eco. Yes, Dutch have the banks, but Julian's maxed on shrines. He's now got the Nagi upgrade. It's either it's come in or it's 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 already there. Um, yeah, it's already in. And there is just the GG straight away there. Lionheart's not going to play any more on that game. And the Yamabushi's just on the right side here picking off. And I think he just knew that it wasn't possible to continue. No five bank. Yeah, we only see four. 
trying to win with just skirms is bad. Yeah, it's it's tricky. I think yeah, I think maybe trying to utilize maybe some more writers could be good. We did have double barracks from Lionheart and just the one stable, so uh, I, I don't know whether or not trying to produce some Falks might have been the answer. Yeah, two or three Falks would have been quite good. Didn't really see any kind of flaming arrows or anything from Julian, and there was a lot of infantry, so that could have definitely been a potential option here. Let's just have a quick look at Lionheart's deck here. I don't think I actually properly looked at it. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping for some bozzies. He had the coin macro, like at 900 coin, and he had a card available. It just came in, and I was hoping for some mercenary shipment, but we didn't see it. Okay, ladies and gents. So that is the second game, Julian taking it again. So it's 2-0 now to Julian. And the next game could be potentially the last one. Julian could be moving into the qualifying stage and could move on to the next part of the tournament. But let's see what happens. I'm very excited to see what the next matchup is going to be. So um, stay with us and we'll be right with you with the third game. Just an FYI, ladies and gents, uh, we haven't got into the third game just yet. I haven't seen it at the moment. So, um, oh, I've just been told what it is. Fantastic. What the matchup is going to be. Lovely. Look at that. Julian playing China. Fantastic. And now Lionheart is going to be giving Spain a go. So let's see how this one plays out. And um, I've just got a nip. Quick toilet break just to the ladies room. So I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. So just hold tight. Hopefully someone can sort out the predictions for you. One of the mods can sort that out so you can spend and bet your channel points and all sort of stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. We've got, we've got 160 people in right now. Let's see if we can get this to 200. Come on, guys. This could be the decider game, the final game between Julian and Lionheart. Who knows? I hope it's not because I always like casting more games. But let's see. Let's see what happens. So um, sit tight and we are going to definitely be getting into this game in the next couple of minutes.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you very much for uh, just hanging on with me there uh, for that slight interlude. And uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to be getting into the game right now. Let's do it. This is on Kamachta. Kamachka. Oh, God. I'm not going to even say that. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> welcome, ladies and gents, to the third game here between Lionheart and Julian. Um, this is on the map called Kamchatka. There we go. A very tricky one for me to say for some reason. And we have Julian here playing as the Chinese on the right-hand side of the map in the blue. And on the left side of the map, we have your, your boy Lionheart here um, playing as the Spanish in the teal, cyan, whatever you want to call it. So it's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to be very interested to see how Julian plays. Are we going to be seeing what well, we do immediately see a TP opening? So that kind of says to me that we're most likely going to be seeing a kind of fast fortress or semi-fast fortress play. I don't, it's not always the case, of course, but sometimes when you see the double village, that normally says to you that they kind of want to play a bit more age two. That's just how I've seen it before in the past, but who knows? There is no deck selected just yet. Let's have a look at Lionheart here and see what he's up to. So... Are we going to be seeing... We're not going to be seeing some ATP play, I don't think. But we are going to be seeing ATP go straight down into the middle of the map here. And I don't know. We might be seeing some naked Fast Fortress stuff from, from Lionheart. Trying to do some kind of timing attack, potentially. I don't know. It's going to be difficult against China, I've got to say. Yeah, Spain going for the middle TP. Interesting. Yes, it is. Are we going to be seeing maybe a second one being put down? I don't know. It is an interesting thing, thing to see. I don't think Lionheart would have thought that Julian would be taking the middle. Um, we do see three settlers. And we do see, an, hang on a minute, an FF slash Revolt FI. Okay, all right. We do, we do know that Lionheart loves a good old Revolt. He loves that kind of mechanic in the game. So let's see how this one plays out. Julian is going to 3-0 this. All right, okay, well, we'll see. have a look here at Julian here he is going for the TX sport card and he's actually going for that first this is this is interesting as well I've seen this more and more people don't tend to go for the Vils so much they tend to go for the consulate first and sacrifice getting two extra Vils I don't know I don't know how I feel about it but we're going to see how it works out I guess I, I can I can see the benefits because it means you get the export in quicker it means that you most likely, if you're going to go for the Russian consulate, which means that you get the blockhouse, it means you get that earlier as well. So, yeah, I don't know. But you do obviously, you do sacrifice quite a bit of eco. And we do see exactly that. The Russian allies is coming in. And this disciple, we don't really want this disciple to go down here. That would be really unfortunate. Monkeys are going to be having a little bit of a fight here about that. The Margarita... War Dog here is definitely going to be able to to sort that monkey out if needed. But it looks like he's going to unfortunately lose the Disciple. That's that's not the best. And there is a card available for Julian, but he's not going to use it. So he's just going to hold that card there. And he's got quite a lot of goats here that he's picked up. Done a great job there. They are going to be fattening as well with the village. Remember that, guys. If you have herdables, use them on the village. They do fatten. Kevin coming in with a subscription. Thank you very much, sir. 14 months of support through the ESOC channel. Thank you very much, dude. And I know that you support my own personal Twitch channel as well. So thank you very much, man. You're an awesome person in the community. You provide a lot as well, especially around certain guides for certain civs. Um, really comprehensive guides, uh, especially for Howden Shoney. So you're awesome, man. Okay. We do see 800 food coming in. Let's have a look. What is Julian doing? Going to be going for the Summer Palace. Four on the Wonder. Standard kind of stuff. This is really going to determine what Julian is up to. How he puts his Vils and what he does here. So we don't actually see any Vils getting tasked over to the gold. Normally if you have a naked Fast Fortress or, or the standard Fast Fortress kind of play. You would see some Vils going over. And we don't actually see that. Are we going to see some kind of blockhouse getting put out? in a forward position or something. Are we going to be seeing that? I don't know. 45 coin coming in from the treasure. Fantastic. Let's have a look at Lion, uh, Lionheart's deck name. It is just FF Revolt FI, I'm afraid. Um, it's nothing nothing fantastic. I'm sorry. 
but we do see some kind of uh, fast fortress, I think, coming in for him. You can clearly see that he's obviously got the capitalism. He's got 300 coin over now, ready to go. And um, yeah, he's going to be aging up pretty quickly. He's got governor, which is going to get him an outpost. It's going to get him 200 gold. So yeah, he's looking in a pretty good position for a fast fortress. So have a look at Julian here still um, about to get the age up. Obviously been a little bit delayed here because, remember, you don't have the two vills. So he didn't go for the Northern Refugees. He instead just went straight for the TX Sport. And it does mean that your age up is significantly later. And look at that, hitting at 5 minutes 10 there. And um, Blockhouse is immediately underway, however. And boom, he's going for 700 coins, 700 wood. So he is himself doing a naked FF. I didn't think he would be. But he is. So there we go. Just a different approach. I'm not too sure if it's a better approach. I guess it means that he doesn't have to use an extra card. I don't know. I'm sure there's some China players in. Whether or not they agree with this approach, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Yeah, Chili Revolt can be nasty. It can. Oh, there are Turtle Revolt plays. Yeah, indeed. And it looks like a, we do have a Ford Outpost, though. Remember that, ladies and gents. A Ford Outpost is here. That sometimes can mean that he wants to play a little bit of aggression. He wants to actually get involved. So let's see if that's the case. Julian here got 700 wood coming in. And, uh, yep, yeah, Lionheart has gone straight through. Spotted everything. He knows what's going on. There's a Fast Fortress underway. And a poor little macaque or the, the monkey there going down. Just really interested to see what the what, what it's gonna be. Like what 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 are we gonna see here? I'm just itching to know. Yes, we do see some aggression, of course. The uh four barracks here going down, and uh five settlers off the back of the seven hundred coin, just for a little bit more eco, I would imagine. And what is this? Marvelous year. Settlers training works significantly faster. Oh, okay, yeah, for 365 seconds. Wow. Either a Spaniard, indeed. Another village going down. And there it is, the Porcelain Tower. So I imagine next card is probably going to be some kind of unit shipment. Uh, I mean, if it was me, it's a tricky one. Because I, I might go the Arcabusiers. You know? Um... I'm definitely going to go for some kind of unit shipment, 100%. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see the Russian consulate switch. Sometimes people switch that to German. So you get the cheaper banner armies. Some people just want to stick with Brits, so they get the good uh, buffs for the land units. I'm not entirely sure. I tend, If I want to play Age 2, I tend to go for the German. But, yeah. We'll see. Lionheart doesn't look like he's going for any kind of sort of revolt play or anything like that, of course. Uh, we do see the scout coming in. He's got um, his steel traps as well. And yeah, he's just kind of sitting back. He's doing some musk play at the moment. So I imagine maybe going for some Lancer. And he's going for obviously the two Falc first. And I imagine another. it's got to be another unit shipment after that, surely. So yeah, he's going to have... Um, Quite a sort of timing attack here. I don't know whether he's going to bother about upgrading his musketeers at all. Now, Julian here definitely in a better position ec economically because of the porcelain tower. It's a very, very powerful structure. And 10 arquebusiers and now some of the market upgrades coming in now as well. And he has got another card available, so I'm not too sure what he's going to be going for. Yeah, he's going to be going for the intervention. So... But he is getting rid of his consulate. I was about to say that. He's getting rid of it. Probably going to be going for the Brits. So he can get a nice musket red coat shipment. And those two canoes are going to get cleared up. Very nice to see. Very, very nice to see. And two Falks rolling out now. This is going to be tricky because I, I always think, yes, I was about to say, I always think hand cannons are a good shout. Especially against civs that do a classic Falk push. Fast Fortress timing. Having the hand cannons is a really, really nice option. So it looks like... Oh, God, that was actually quite brutal, that shot there. That was um, 
That was not the best for Julian here. Uh, Lionheart doing pretty well score-wise, up 2k. Looking pretty good now. Um, and he is going to be focusing on the village. I would say that's the best thing to focus on. Because that will really screw up the population for Julian. Because, you know, these villages cost 180 wood. They're not cheap. And we have something very scary here. Lancers are coming in. And where is the anti-cav? There isn't anything available right now. He's got a territorial army coming in. He's only got the Minutemen to try and deal with the Lancers. And he's going to have to call them. Otherwise, otherwise, this is going to be um, disastrous. Yes, they are called. The sentries are here. Hand cannons need to definitely focus on the Falconets. They need to get round. But the hang, some of them have popped out on the other side. Disastrous. And um, the hand cannons are going to try and do as much as they can to take out the second Falconet. All the Lancers have managed to be taken down, though. So that is that is a good thing because that was that was too scary. Too scary there. And uh, we don't see any Lancers, no Falconets on the map now. And um, this is not the best place, actually, for Lionheart. He doesn't have upgraded Musketeers. And there are a lot of Arcabusiers here. And this is going to get cleaned up, ladies and gents. The Disciples just punching the Falconet there. And, um, yeah, this is, this is not looking good now for Lionheart. All of his tempo has now been lost. And this is the, this is the worst thing that can happen for someone playing against China because the minute they get the upper hand it starts to snowball and we see an intervention coming out even more uh, red coats are coming out now so many units on the field and not much here for Lionheart at the moment five lancers or four lancers sorry coming in because he already sent the five so he's got the four and he's got some skirms and he's got one falconet coming in Oh, he's using the... Oh, my God. He's using two Falk and one Falk. He's just shipping in one Falks. Oh, that can't be... That can't be good, surely. That can't be the best use of the cards. One Falks. I don't know. Uh, I would probably go for, like, five Hussars, to be honest. I mean, that's probably better, right? Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of infantry here that he needs to deal with. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think you're probably better off maybe, I don't know, trying to train the Falcons yourself. Surely go for a thousand wood maybe. I, I don't know. See? One Falconet is out second on the way. I mean, this hold was actually pretty, pretty crazy. And I don't know whether or not it was better skipping the the Vils. I, I just don't know. It's an interesting one. I, I don't know, guys. I, I think, yes, you get a slower age up, but you get you get this down quicker. Uh, it means that you get the blockhouse out quicker. It means that you get the trickle sooner. And it means you get to hold a shipment. Which is big, right? Holding the shipments key. And then when you get into age three, you can really start rattling off the shipments. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all about the disciples as well. Always, always have your explorer there because training those disciples can be so crucial when you need to do it. I start to export myself. Yeah, this is a. Uh, China Cav is going to roll over Spain. Yeah, there is a lot of Cav here. I've got to say, a lot of Cav. But Lionheart doing what he does best. He's going to be pushing forward. Going to try and see if he can get actually a pop on the units there. Very nice. Nice volley there. Fantastic. We've got some more Lancers coming in now. And uh, what's going on over here? And a bit of a raid there. But there is a lot of cavalry here that can, that can do quite well against Lancers. Because Lancers don't do too well against actual Cav. So, you know, they can actually do quite well here. And now he's going to be in a sticky situation. And he's just going to get in. He's, he's just going to do the China, just a move it in and uh, shooting one one foul going down. And uh, luckily that Meteor Hammer getting around the back to dispatch the second one. And there's not much left here. The Rodelleros are starting to fall. However, he needs to be careful because they are pretty darn tough. But the Arcabusier is starting to clear them up nicely. And more rods coming in. Julian doing a great job of getting his cab out of there. And now he is pushing forward with 37 units in total here. And only 9 here for Lionheart right now. He's got more rods on the way. Um, 
And yeah, this is looking uh, a little sketchy now for Lionheart. I don't know what else he's got up his sleeve. He's utilized a lot of his military shipments already. And um, it's looking pretty favorable right now for, for Julian. And we do now see the rods switching back here. Trying to see what they can do. And uh, unfortunately, the GG there coming from Lionheart. Which means that Julian takes the third and final game 3-0 to Julian. GG, well played to both players. And yeah, I just think just some unfortunate uh, mishaps there for Lionheart throughout. And um, Julian just doing a great job at really just utilizing some of the units, especially like, for example, the Rodelleros against the Casadors in the previous game. Something like that. Really just great Great knowledge and understanding of, of when to use that and, and just really, really enjoyable to watch some of the fights. And um, But no, I really enjoyed all those three games. It was great to cast. And um, Julian moves on to the next stage of the Hidden Cup tournament. There we go. I guess it's time for the DLC, DLC Civ, Civ stream. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, to be fair, Lionheart does main pretty much... Um, all of the DLC civs. He really enjoys playing the new civs and he likes to promote them. Um, so going entering into a legacy tournament is going to be a little bit more challenging for someone that doesn't really play those civs as much. So I completely understand um, that as well is, is not going to be um, great for you, essentially. But um, GG's to both players. Well done. And that brings it 3-0 to Julianne. Who's saying Julianne? To Julian. There we go. <laughs> there we go, guys. Thank you very much for this fantastic matchup here between Julian and Lionheart. We are going to leave it there at 3 0. Of course, Julian moves on to the next stage of the Hidden Cup tournament. And. Um, Okay, uh, but not sure didn't watch Rex. Okay, he's that saying you think you have time for another? Um, it, I, not particularly, I'm afraid, because uh, I kind of need to get some food. It's it's half seven. I haven't eaten in the evening. I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. Um, maybe later on in the evening, but I, I can't I can't say for sure. Uh, maybe there is somebody who else who else can take up the helm of Caster. But I'm afraid I need to step out. I need to get. I need to get some food. Um, Julian's saying I could cast if you give me the overlays. There you go. Uh, it does take a little while to get used to these overlays, though. Just got to say that it's not. It's not too easy. It's not that easy. Sorry. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we're gonna leave it there, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Widgie. I've been given the fantastic sort of pleasure of casting to you guys, and uh, it's all thanks to Esad and the Esoc community thanks to this hidden cup tournament so hope you guys keep track of it you can check the brackets use exclamation mark bracket and you can get the link there for you thank you very much guys it's been a pleasure i'm gonna head off i'm gonna grab some food and i might be on a bit later i might be streaming on my own channel who knows i have really recently released a new video if you do want to go check that out on my own personal youtube channel that is all the plugs right there thanks very much guys it's been great and i'll catch you in the next one Peace out.
Oh, by the way, guys, sorry, I probably scared some of you. Um, I know the music's quite loud. Just a quick one, by the way. Um, if um, I'm not too sure what's going on, whether or not we're going to be, uh, whether or not Julianne or someone is going to be uh, casting a, another um, another match. Uh, someone's saying, can you send the overlay? Uh, no, it's it's like a three four hundred megabyte program. Um, if you go on the ESOC forum, I think I think it's it's quite easy to find. Um, it's made by Vlad the Junior. So if you search Vlad the Junior, um, you'll be able to find the link of his overlay that he uses and you'll have to download it and then load up the overlay. And there's certain things that you can enter and then you run the overlay. But it is a little bit more tricky because you have to mess around with the scenes and you have to you have to have this as a window capture. And you have to make sure you're capturing the correct window. And then you have to obviously have a separate scene for your game. And um, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a few hotkeys you can use, like as I use here to obviously put the countdown. That's using a hotkey and then you can increase it like that. Um, yeah, it's all in the program, but it takes a little bit of time. So it's, it's up to you guys. But as I say, I don't know when that's happening, if it's going to happen right now. But there is another thing that's happening right now, which is on Animus's channel. Uh, or is it the Royal Clan channel? Uh, I can't remember all the details. Um, I don't know if Amazon... Amazon? I don't know if Animus is actually in um, in it at the moment. Uh, let's have a quick look. Yeah, maybe an out yeah, I am announcing it right now. Uh, yeah, so there's a little stream on the Royal Switch channel. Uh, going to be a little bit later. There's going to be a best of three against uh, Memento Mori and Shake. And then there'll be GK Shaman. Uh, we'll be prom promoting a new upcoming Royals tourney as well. So, yeah, I'm unable to raid, I'm afraid. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to be ending the stream right now. So I hope you guys have a good evening, a good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. And I'll catch you in the next video or the next stream or wherever I am. So peace out. Have a good one. Good night.